we're going to talk about the Color Checker Passport today. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of gear of all time. I've been talking about the Color Checker for going on, oh, I think it's about eight years now. Uh, I don't go anywhere without it. I don't shoot anywhere without it. Uh, it is just the best investment you can make for color. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, my name is Joe Brady. And in addition to X-Rite stuff, you'll see me doing a whole bunch of other stuff. And those of you who got my newsletter saw that there is another broadcast coming up uh, also later this week. So let's get right into it. Exactly what is a uh, color checker passport? Well, you've probably seen these targets. And what it really does is it gives you a set of references so that you can get to perfect color every time. And you, there's also enhancement targets and a white balance target. And I'm going to go over each target so you understand better what it does and then how to put it to use. What the target really allows you to do is to create camera profiles. And what is that? Well, a custom camera profile uh, uses the target to create uh, a set of references so that the colors are perfect. It might sound strange, but camera manufacturers all have their own ideas as to what color should be. There is no standard for red. Also, color is going to present itself differently depending on the light source, depending on the different conditions. And what ends up happening is if you've got, say, a light, say it's a tungsten light or a fluorescent light, they have spikes and valleys in their color output that will then affect how your image looks. And the Color Checker Passport can fix that. Now, white balance and profiles work together. They're not separate. You still have to do a white balance, and then a profile will take that white balance as a reference and get you to the right color. So you might have seen this graphic before. Well, let's just take a look. This is kind of a, a way I like to describe what's going on. So uh, I live in Warwick, New York, which is where we're broadcasting right from right now. It's in the uh, Hudson Valley in lower New York. And I want to get to, we're going to call this fictitious town Redville. I want to get to 100% red. Well, think of Warwick as the starting point. That is your white balance. And what a white balance does is it gives you that perfect starting point. When you use the profile, the profile then tells the starting point, well, to get to perfect red, let's say in this case you go up a bit and off to the right, as we'll see right here. So we'll go 10 miles north and 3 miles east, and that puts us in downtown Redville. So the combination of the white balance, in this case being Warwick, and the profile get us to that exact downtown red. Now, if your white balance is wrong, let's say instead of starting in Warwick, you started in Cleveland, and you followed those same directions, you would end up not in Redville. In fact, you'd get wet. You'd end up in the middle of Lake Erie. So again, the white balance is your starting point, and then the profile is the directions how to get from that starting point to each of those perfect colors. Now, with the targets in the color checker, there are a handful of of things that you can do with it. First, the color checker passport, the standard target. You've seen this before. And what they do is give you a set of references. And if you take a look at the target, you can see, well, even though this one's upside down, you can see it's got red, green, blue, CMYK, and a whole bunch of other colors that uh, exist in nature, skin tones, plant colors, that type of thing. And by having these set of references, which are in a color independent space, by the way, the way the software works, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, uh, but it allows you to have a set of standards that the camera and the profile can then work together to use. Now, the software allows you to create a profile that is specific to your camera. You can even take it as far as the lens. I have, haven't personally seen enough of a difference to do that, but some people do. And also under lighting conditions. And as we get into the software, we'll talk about what lighting conditions you might want to have profiles for. Now, in addition to the color checker target, which you just saw, which is what you use to create the profile, there are two other targets. One is the white balance target. Uh, some people like to create a custom white balance in the camera at start so that you have a better reference on your view screen. Now, remember, the, the image you're seeing on the back of your camera is a JPEG. So if you do have a good white balance at that, it will show you the best possible result uh, kind of what it's going to kind of look like when you make your print. Uh, it's also a nice size if you're into video. I use this card a lot if I'm video recording uh, as a reference that I can then white balance off of that. It is something called a spectrally flat target. What that means is pretty much under any lighting conditions, it reflects red, green, and blue uh, the same. So it really doesn't matter. And it also has the advantage that if you're a JPEG shooter, which I hope you're not, by the way, but if you insist on shooting JPEGs, you can use this for that as well. And the third target is the enhancement target. 
Now what it allows you to do is to sort of flavor your images and it also has a bunch of different references. Let's take a look at this one a little bit more closely. So along the top, you've got kind of a rainbow. And this is really a nice visual reference to see if something's askew. It's just, in this case, just for your eyes. On the bottom, you've got a what's called a gray wedge. You've got from black to white. Uh, and if you take a picture of this and you see in your camera that your blinkies are flashing, it could be kind of a warning that either you are blowing out highlights or clipping shadows. The fun stuff on this target happens in the middle. Now there are two rows. The top one's designed for portraits. The bottom one is designed for landscapes. It's these two squares that are outlined in yellow are both neutral. They're both copies of the white balance target. And what happens is as you go along the target, you can see that they're slightly colored. So in this case, these are warming targets. And you might notice as you move from left to right on the top row that it gets very slightly cyan blue. If you white balance off of a cool color, it has the opposite effect. It actually warms up the image. This is handy for skin tones, and we'll see this in action in a bit. These are the cooling colors. You can see they're very slightly magenta, slightly pink. If you white balance off of these, it's going to have the opposite effect again on your image. Your blues and greens will get a little bit more intense, and we'll see this put to use when we get into software. Now, before you ask, because this always comes up, can I use the color checker with blah blah software. It is designed to use systems that work in DNG and this is the Adobe suite. So if you are still using Aperture or Capture One or DxO or something like that, those softwares do not support DNG profiles. Unfortunately right now it's got to be in the Adobe suite. So it's Lightroom, Photoshop, Elements, anything that uses Adobe Camera Raw. And we're going to start in Lightroom. I like to start in Lightroom because uh, it's a very easy way to work. Uh, it's a plug-in system, and when you install the software, it just makes it easy to use. By the way, if you create a custom camera profile in Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop see it, and vice versa, and we'll go through both possible, uh, post both possible processes. So how difficult is it to create a custom camera profile? It's ridiculously easy. When you download the software, or load the software in for the passport. You will get a plug-in in a Lightroom and a standalone app uh, that you would use for Adobe Camera Raw, which I'll show you in a minute. So after you've got the software installed, all you need to do is simply take a picture of the color checker target. Now here I've got uh, my friend Tristan holding the target, and we can see the color checker down below and the enhancement target up top. Now this is optional. The one that's actually going to create the profile is this one down here. And here's how you create a profile. You ready for this? You go to File, Export with Preset, and Color Checker Passport. And this will show up after you install the plugin for Lightroom. So you click on that and you give it a name. Now in this case this happens to be in Studio Lighting and it's with my uh, Sony a7R. So I would call it Sony a7R Studio. And I'll call it Studio 2 because I think I already have one there. And then you click on Save. And that's how complicated it is to create a custom profile. You can see in the upper left-hand side that it says it's processing the profile. I found it takes so 45 seconds to a little over a minute. And with Lightroom, it's going to ask you to restart uh, so that Lightroom can see the profile because Lightroom isn't constantly active. By the way, if you create one in Adobe Camera Raw, it sees it right away. And again, as I mentioned before, if you create one in either place, all the programs see it because they're all sharing uh, the same uh, plugins folder. Now, when this is done, uh, it's going to come up with a little message box that says that uh, Lightroom needs to be restarted in order to see the profile. And this, by the way, takes a little bit longer because this is a, a big file. This is a 36 megapixel file. Probably a little bit of overkill for uh, a portrait, but it is what it is. Now, oh, a good question. Stephen asks, should you white balance the target before you create the profile? And the answer is there is no reason, that, there's no need to do that. Why? Because the software knows how to find the target. Once it finds the target, it also knows which of these patches is neutral. So it will actually do a white balance behind the scenes. Uh, keep in mind that a, a raw file doesn't technically have a white balance. Oh, and if I didn't mention, you got to do this with raw files. You can't do this with JPEGs because all that stuff's embedded already. 
Okay, so we've got our message here that the profile's been generated successfully and Lightroom needs to be restarted. I click on OK. However, like any good cooking show, I already had one in the oven. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this a bit. I'm going to bring up the target here. And you access the profile through uh, the develop module in Lightroom. And if you scroll down in the develop module down to camera calibration, you'll see something called the profile. Now, we've been working with the Adobe standard. That's what Adobe gives you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's lovely. It's very safe. However, if you were to actually hold a color checker passport in front of you, you would see that some of the colors actually are substantially weaker than even what you're seeing with your eye. For example, these three blues, this kind of plum and magenta, sometimes this green, sometimes this yellow and this blue. And it's going to vary depending on the light source, the spectrum of the light. What I want you to do is watch this chart as I apply the profile. And I guess, yes, white balance is part of it. So I can come off here and white balance. So now I have a perfectly neutral white balance. Now let's go ahead and apply the profile. And I had already done one here. Here it says A7R Studio. Watch those patches I just pointed out. And watch, did you see all those colors snap into place? This row here in particular, I'm going to turn it off just so you can see that again. So here's the Adobe Standard. And the entire image is changing, but in particular, those, this green, this orange, are all changing fairly violently. One more time. So there's a big difference. Now, of course, we don't spend our day uh, photographing targets. So how can we put this to use? Well, again, here's, here's our friend Tristan. Let me just back off to fit her into the window here. And yes, she does have purple hair. And purple is one of those colors that's in the blue family that the Adobe standard does really cost us a lot. So let's go ahead and zoom in again a bit on her. Now, watch her hair. Here she is with the Adobe standard. Watch what happens when we apply our studio profile. Did you see that? You see how much deeper that purple gets? Now that's what she looked like, not this washed out thing that we got from the Adobe Standard. And this is really important because now I know I've got a perfect starting point from here. Yes, color editing is somewhat subjective and you can make changes how you like. But by creating a profile and having a white balance for the scene, you're at that perfect starting point. Now I had mentioned the, the warming patches. Uh, maybe you want to have the skin a little bit warmer. In this case, I think she looks great, but I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual copy of this because I want to have two copies. And then I'm going to go back to the target. And I'm going to back off on the zoom. And now I'm going to come up and I'm going to white balance off of here. I'm going to white balance off of the warming targets. And again, this one's neutral and you can see they get slightly more blue cyan as you go from left to right. So I'm going to get the white balancer out and oh, I'm going to choose two in. So I'm going to click on here and say this is what I want to white balance off of. And did you see everything behind? Let me zoom out again. Let me, let me click a neutral. So as I come in here, watch what happens to the skin tones. You can see how everything gets warmer. So what I'm going to do is apply this to one of these portraits copies that I just made. So I'm going to select this one and then I'm going to click synchronize. And what I want to sync is the white balance and for some reason Adobe keeps putting this process version thing in there, which it went away, and the calibration, which is the profile. Then I click synchronize and it applies the, all of those settings to that image. So now if I click on here, let me get rid of this a second, I'm going to click on this one and this one, and I'm going to hit C to compare. And let's get rid of the tabs so we can see a little better. And you can see the difference here. Here's the original. Here is that same one with using that warming patch. And you, you may decide you like this a little better or somewhere in between. The beauty of this is by having those patches, you're able to get to exactly the same amount of warming every time. That's the, the real handiness of using that. Let's take an example. Let's take a look at one more example here. Kind of a crazy. So let's get rid of the comparing part. There's our crazy friend Megan. And again, this is a shot we did for green screen. So let's go into the develop module. 
We'll scroll down to camera calibration. And again, I can white balance first. I can again, you can pick any of these patches. They're all going to be neutral. I particularly like the use the first two. And you see in that case there's no difference. Then I'll go down to camera calibration. And here's one I did where I did green screen. And again, you can watch. And again, you can see a lot of these same color patches are really jumping. So again, here's the Adobe standard. And you can see, in this case, actually, this kind of uh, flesh-toned patch is, this light flesh-toned patch is, is changing as well as long as these blues. So if you look up in here, you'll see as we apply the profile that those colors change. In fact, this brown is having a little bit of a shift as well. So once you've done this, once you've got your white balance and your profile dialed in, you can then select all the shots that were in that sequence, click on Synchronize, you want to choose white balance, the process version, and calibration. Click sync, and all of your images now have the most perfect white balance and color response possible. Yes, again, you can make your subjective editing decisions uh, to override this, and that's the part of the cre creativity part of it. But now you've got a perfect starting point, even if your color was completely messed up. For example, <clears throat> Let me go back to here. Let's say, for example, you had chosen, you had the wrong white balance set on your camera. As long as you're in RAW, <clears throat> as long as you're in RAW, even if you had something horrendous happen like this, like say you, that this would happen if you had, uh, oh, if you had tungsten and you were shooting at sunset, uh, you might get something like this. The beauty of RAW is that I can always come back, get my white balance, and then apply my camera calibration so that I have that perfect starting point. <clears throat> so what we did with, uh, with Megan in this one in the green screen, once we had our perfect calibration, then we were able to composite her into our new backgrounds. And again, you see, when you see that first thing flash up, that's a raw file with nothing applied to it, then the profile gets applied. And we took this one and put her in here. So that's wonderful. So that's how we deal with portraits in Lightroom. Now the other thing is uh, landscapes. So how do we do thing? How do we do that? Landscape, it's also very easy. You actually simply, what I do is I simply hold it out in front of me. Now if you've got a long lens with you, you're probably going to have to either enlist someone else to hold it for you or put it down somewhere and then back up and take the shot. So again, this is, uh, this is actually out in Snow Canyon in Utah, and I once again would take the shot of the target. Does it matter if it's skewed or rotated a little bit? No. Uh, also, how uh, big does the target need to be in the frame? This is a good size. You'd, we probably don't want to go too much smaller than this. I think I have an example of one, this one right here. I wouldn't go smaller than this in the target, uh, but this will still work. But I like to have more, it just makes it easier. So I've got my target here, once again, just to go through the process, file export with preset, color checker passport, give it a name, again we did that. So right after this happened, a storm was clearing by. <clears throat> Let me get rid of the uh, left panel so we have a little more screen real estate. We'll get Lightroom to finish drawing it, there we go. <clears throat> now this is the, the generic it'll be standard again and it's lacking some color in this case even some of the sandstone kind of orange brown is a little bit diminished and also as the storm was moving along the sky back here had kind of gone that gray blue and in this case it actually went way too neutral just the act of applying the profile that we created for this place will bring the colors back so let's go ahead and apply that and I actually created one called Snow Canyon and look at the difference between that and the standard. And again, just by having that, we have great color to start. So just to show you full screen, there's the before, and there's the after. You can see the greens pop more. We've got a little more saturation out of that orange color. And now the sky has got kind of that blue-gray roiling that was going on as this storm was passing. <clears throat> Oh, so now, okay, a couple of questions. Uh, uh, so somebody said, how can you use this profile when importing photos directly into Lightroom? Uh, you can do that. 
Uh, I, I don't mean this to be a Lightroom lesson, uh, but you actually would create a preset using this. So for example, if I had this image, let me come over to, to here, I would click on create a new preset and I'll call it, oh, I'll call it landscape. Choose the white balance, the process version, and the calibration here, and click on create. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then as you do your import, uh, you can choose, please apply this preset during the import. That would allow you to do it. Also, someone asked, how am I getting to the white balance tool so quickly? Uh, one thing about softwares is learning the shortcuts really does speed things up. And on a Mac and a PC, it doesn't matter. You literally just type the W key, and it gives you your white balance picker. So that's something, uh, that's a handy thing that you, that you really want to do. Uh, and uh, Dan asks, can you apply the white balance after the profile has been applied? And the answer to that is yes. Remember, this is a raw file. And a raw file, when, you do, when you're working in Lightroom, everything stays raw until you export the file. So if I apply the white balance first or the profile, it's, in this case, it's not going to matter because in the way Lightroom works, it's just a set of instructions, do this when you export the file. So the order that it does it uh, really doesn't matter. Uh, someone asked uh, uh, about do these profiles affect what your printer is going to print? And the answer is absolutely. Uh, and now there's three parts to the whole profiling world, and, and two of them we're not going to get into today. First of all, there's an assumption made that before you do any of this, if you're going to be working on uh, something where you're going to do very color critical work, you've got to calibrate your monitor. We'll be doing a program on that soon. The camera profiles ensure great color when you're doing your editing, but if you're going to make your own personal subjective decisions, then you're going to have to make sure your monitor's calibrated. The third part of that, after the monitor calibration and the custom camera profile, is the printer profile, having a good profile for your printer paper combination. Again, we will do that soon. Uh, Craig asked a very good question about dealing landscapes. Uh, in fact, as, he's, as I'm answering that, I'm just going to come over and, and pick something else out uh, and just show you again what happens as we apply the profile. Does the latitude and time of year uh, affect whether it's sunny or cloudy, etc.? And the answer to that is yes, it does. Now, one profile, having one custom profile for your camera is going to be so much better than, than just using the Adobe standard. But how many profiles do you really want to have? Now, if you look under my profile list, you can see I have a bunch of them here. These, by the way, are the camera styles that your camera provides. I would steer clear of these. I, I hate these, um, so I don't even use them. But these are profiles for different places. So you can see I've got daylight, I've got the studio lights, I have fill flash. If I happen to be working under some kind of mixed lighting conditions, I'll create it for that too. I do take it one step further. When I'm dealing with the desert southwest, which I frequent a lot, I do have a profile for out there. As you can see, I've got one for Snow Canyon, I've got Zion and Bryce. The reason for that is the skies there to us Easterners look unnaturally blue. The reason for that is there's much less water in the atmosphere. And for you underwater photographers, you know that the first color you lose as you go underwater is red. Well, the same thing happens here in the east. The blues aren't quite as intense as they are out west. So I do create a profile for there uh, because it will take advantage of those blues. So as you can see here, we've got these deep blue skies, but they really were deeper. And the standard conversion is costing us. Watch what happens as we apply the profile. And did you see how much? deeper that blue guy, I mean incredibly so. Let's zoom in and undo that and do it again. So that's what we were given. I've lost all that incredible blue. And by the way, if you haven't been out here before, the first time you look at the sky, just with your own eyes, it's going to look wrong. It looks kind of uh, Kodachrome-y. Uh, for those of you who remember Kodachrome, it's actually a super saturated look, but that's really what it looks like. Uh, and, and again, for us Easterners, it looks kind of strange at first. So let me just check, any other questions here? Uh, so uh, Rachel asks, uh, if you're calibrating for studio light, would you shoot the target at the same exposure settings as you're shooting your subject? Really the bottom line is the target has to have a good exposure and it needs to be under uh, the same exact lighting conditions uh, as you're going to be shooting in. So if you're dealing with fill flash, 
you need to make sure that the, the target's going to be where the person is because that's going to affect the percentage of flash to ambient light. Studio lights, really, once you create something for your studio lights, for example, let's say you have a set, a set of studio lights you always use. Once you create a profile for that, you're really done. You don't have to create it again. Just create it that one time and you're good to go. Uh, same thing for out west. Now, I do create profiles for very specific conditions. Uh, someone asked what happens if you have a quickly changing light. Is there going to be a difference? Uh, if you're dealing with cloudy versus sunny, strangely enough, it's not as much as you think. Technically, yes, I do have a profile for sunshine, for clouds, for shade, uh, for fluorescent, for tungsten, and for any kind of mixed lighting I might run into. However, what's really changing under those conditions more so than the white balance, than the uh, color profile is the white balance. So I will frequently just pull up the target and take another shot with the white balance. That said, I do not create a white balance at sunrise. I actually use my white balance and my profile for midday when I'm getting up early because if you actually did one during sunrise and you created a profile for it, it would actually neutralize out that golden light that you got up so early for. So in that case, I personally would just use a daylight setting for that. And again, here an example, this is Bryce, and we can see before and after. In this case, there aren't any really deep blues because the sky is kind of uh, hazy. There was actually a controlled burn going on when we were here, and that's what you're seeing off of the distance here. But if you take a look at the greens, you'll see the greens are changing subtly, but a lot. Let me back off on this. So here we see the standard, and here is the daylight. So do you see what's going on there? You can see the greens are lightening up and opening up. It's just giving you a much better color response. Let's see, a couple other questions before we move on. Oh, how do you delete profile? And somebody asked, uh, Jake asked, where are these profiles stored on the computer? Um, that's, one, that's one of those things that can only cause you heartache. Uh, knowing where these are stored is, is a bad thing, but if you go on xrightphoto.com, uh, under the Color Checker Passport tab, it will show you the links, uh, the pro, the, where they live. However, there's also a little utility program called the DNG Profile Manager, which you can also download. Let me just bring it up so you can see it. And what that uh, does is it allows you to organize your profiles. So you can see here's the program. I can turn them on and off. I can export them. I can delete them if I decide, oh, for example, let's see. I have a Shade Zion and a Daylight Zion. And a Bryce. Well, Bryce and Zion are just a couple hours apart, so I can probably get rid of one of those. So let's get rid of, uh, oh, here we have two Zions. So let's get rid of that. I can just click on that and delete it, and it says, do you want to delete it? Um, that's as easy as that is. So this is a little utility that you can also download. It's a lot better idea than going into the folders and looking for them. And by the way, if you ever go in there and rename them, the software won't see them anymore. So you're better off doing it this way or uh, just leave them alone. So someone asked, am I just going to do this stuff in Lightroom? No. We're going to go into Photoshop as well. So I hope you're clear on the Lightroom part. Let's jump into Photoshop now. I'm going to hide Lightroom, and let's go into Photoshop and see how we do this. So I'm going to open up some images here. And now, you might notice that I have a folder called DNGs, and they don't have to all be DNGs. In fact, let's go ahead and open up a couple of raw files. And let's open up all of these. So I'm going to click on Open, and what's going to happen is, since they're DNGs and raw files, they automatically open up in Adobe Camera Raw. So again, here's our target. And here's our target as a raw. Now, this is the one time that you actually have to save a file as a DNG file. Now, a DNG file is a digital negative. Uh, it's a, what Adobe does actually behind the scenes. You have an option to create your images here. Should you do it, that's up to you. I, I personally stopped doing it. But if you want to create a profile using the application that you can use in Adobe Camera Raw, you do need to do this. So I'm going to click on my white balance. Again, you don't have to do this. It's just to make it more visually pleasing. How do you create a profile here? Well, I have to first save this as a DNG file. So if you click down on Save Image on the bottom, you'll see that the default is a DNG. And I'm just going to, oh, I'll put it in the same place. 
So I'm going to click on Save, and that's how it saves a DNG file. So now I need to go into the Color Checker app, which is already open. It's right here. And by the way, it tells you, make sure that your display has been calibrated. So we'll just hit OK on that. And let's hide other stuff so we have some room here. So it says drag and drop a DNG image here, or you can just go to File Open. So I'm going to add an image. I'll go to the place we just were. Here's the DNG that we just saved. So I'll click on Open. And what the software is going to do is it's going to go find the target. It will put it up on the screen. And at that point, it will be exactly what we just saw in Lightroom. Now, while we're in here, while it's loading this file, you'll also notice there's something here called a dual illuminant DNG. This is a way to create a profile that could serve sort of as a master profile. And what you do is you take pictures of the color checker under two very different lighting conditions. Say, for example, one under tungsten light, one in daylight. You then load both of them in, and the software will create a profile that will interpolate what color shifts are happening based on the white balance. So it's a way to, in essence, kind of have one profile that's a do-all, do-everything. Uh, it's an option for you. Me, personally, I like to have a profile for specific lighting conditions, but that's certainly up to you. So it sees the target. It went and zoomed in. In fact, I can uh, zoom out so you can see it was the entire image there. And what it's done is it's shown us these are the places that it's going to sample from. And you want to make sure that when you're holding the target, you didn't cause any shadows to be cast. You can see I got close here, but it didn't actually go over the target. Occasionally, for some unknown reason or odd reason, maybe you were holding it in front of, say, a fence grid, and it confused the software because it couldn't find the target. It will present you with these four green dots, and then you can then get them and you can move them around. So if I come here, I could say, well, no, it's, it's in the wrong place. I need to move that over here. Generally doesn't happen, but occasionally. Uh, I found when I put it on a grid table, uh, sometimes it had trouble finding it. So it sees the target. Everything's happy. Click on Create Profile. We get the same exact message. In this case, it's just uh, it picked up the name of the camera from the metadata. And yeah, there you go. On a Mac, there's where the profiles get stored. It's actually, well, um, that's all I'm going to tell you. If you really want to know, you can go into X-Rite Photo and see. Click on Save, and just like we saw in Lightroom, it says Saving Profile. And when it's done, it's going to come back with a message and say some software applications might need to be restarted. As there you go. Applications using the profile may need to be restarted before you can use it. What they're talking about is Lightroom. Adobe Camera Raw does not need that. So that's how you create a profile using the Color Checker Passport app that you would then use in Adobe Camera Raw. Just so you can see the uh, dual luminant, here it asks you to install, to just drag or open up both, uh, uh, both different color temperature uh, shots of the target, and then it will create a profile. So let's go into, back into Photoshop. So here we are in Adobe Camera Raw. And it, although it's not obvious when you first look at it, Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom's develop module are actually kind of the same thing. Uh, it's organized differently. Uh, Lightroom is a lot prettier, and it's easier to navigate. But pretty much every tool that's in Lightroom's develop module is right here. And if you go under White Balance, you see we've got custom. I can come up to the white balance picker and say that's what I want my white balance to be. And all of the tabs that we saw in Lightroom are actually mirrored right along this tab here above basic. And this little one with a picture of a camera is camera calibration. And does that look familiar? Look, here's our Adobe standard. And here's our Zion Daylight. And as we apply it, exactly the same thing happens. In fact, we can zoom in a bit. Go back to the Adobe Standard. You can see all those colors we lost. In this case, you can see the blues, the purples, and this green are way off. When we apply the profile, we get all our colors back. In this case, even this red. And red is usually a color that isn't diminished too much. In this case, it's actually pretty diminished. Take one more look at that red as we go to the Standard. And even the red was lost. So uh, that's what having a custom profile does to you. It gets you all those colors back. You can then, just like we did in Lightroom, apply the profile to all the images that were shot under those conditions. So once we have all this done, then it's going to open up in Photoshop. Now the difference 
between Lightroom and Photoshop is once you open it in Photoshop, it's no longer a raw file. That's the difference. Uh, so you got, you got to be careful that uh, you're ready to actually do this. Now, you always get your raw file. You can always come back to open up your raw file. But once you open these, then they are they have the file embedded, the profiles embedded, they are now PSD files. In Lightroom, you're always working on the raw file. You can always go back and change the white balance. The difference is that it doesn't actually embed any of that information until you actually export the file. Uh, a couple of people asked, here's a good question, a couple of people asked about polarizing filters. And I did a test, uh, so I, I actually know what happens. The qu a question about a polarizer, is it going to affect uh, the profile? And what my experience has shown is that actually, no, it does not. Uh, now, this is assuming you have a decent polarizer. If you've got some $7 polarizer somewhere, then all bets are off. But if you have even a half-decent polarizer, you know, something you paid 25 bucks or so for, um, is what you want to make sure is that the red, green, and blue light are being transmitted uh, the same through this polarizer. And my experience has been is that they do. Uh, I even had a, a relatively inexpensive, about a $40, 10-stop neutral density filter, took a shot uh, with and without it, created a profile with both, and the profiles were identical. Let's see. Uh, Russell asks, can these DNG profiles be saved or exported as ICC profiles? Uh, unfortunately not. The, their DNG profile is a different way of doing things. Uh, ICC has different protocols, and that's really, uh, that's really the, the limitation. Uh, you've got to work in the Adobe suite, which works behind the scenes in DNG. It's been a battle for years, but uh, Adobe's trying to get everybody to switch over to DNG, and none of the camera manufacturers want anything to do with it. So uh, we're at a stalemate right now, uh, but Adobe still does use DNG behind the scenes. Uh, so Jack says, so you don't need a separate profile for each location? That is correct. I do have an East Coast profile versus a Desert Southwest profile, but that's really about it. Uh, oh, uh, Gordon also asked, this is, a, this is a good question, Gordon. Do I always use ProPhoto RGB? As you can see down here, this is the, the, uh, the conversion protocol. So when I open the file, this says, what is it going to be in color space? And the answer is yes. I stay in ProPhoto RGB until I'm going to export for a couple of reasons. One, I'm constantly bouncing back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop, and Lightroom does work in ProPhoto RGB. Let's jump back over to Lightroom for a sec. Lightroom is always in ProPhoto RGB. Uh, it's actually a variation on it, but close enough. ProPhoto RGB is the biggest color space, so it, it's pretty much the entire visible light spectrum and then some. I prefer to do my edits in this. Now, when I export a file, chances are it's going to end up as a JPEG. If I'm sending it out to the lab, an sRGB JPEG is what my lab wants. So that's what I'm going to do. But while I'm working, whether it be in Lightroom or in Photoshop, until I'm exporting a file to then send to a lab for printing, I stay in Pro Photo, and then I export to JPEG. Let's see, a couple other questions just to see what's going on here. Uh, oh, someone, uh, Ken said, and that's the reason that I created a virtual copy. Uh, I simply did it so I could flip back and forth uh, with the two profiles, that's all. I did that right here. Uh, virtual copy, by the way, for those of you uh, that are new to Lightroom, it just allows you to have different effects uh, on, this, on the same image. It's act the reason it's a virtual copy is you haven't actually copied anything, you created another thumbnail. So I find it handy, and it's just... Uh, command or control apostrophe. <laughs> Excuse me. So for example, if I wanted to see, well, what does this look like? Go as a black and white. I can have virtual copies and see which one I like. So this is the one where I warm things up. There's the original. There's a black and white. It's just kind of a handy thing to have. Uh, so another, uh, Joe, Joe asked another good question. In Adobe Camera Raw, if you click the Done button, let's go back to that. Let's go back. Let me open up another Raw file again. Just pick something random here. Yeah, that's fine. So if I go in here and I hit Done rather than Open Image. So I've got my profile here. Let's again click on Camera Calibration. I change it to 
Zion Daylight and I get all my intense blues back. If I hit done, what Adobe Camera Raw does is it keeps these, these choices. So if I open this again, it will come right back to here. Uh, it's still not embedded in the file yet until I click on open. If I go ahead and do that, if I click on open the file, now it's going to open it into Photoshop. It says it's reading the raw format, but once it opens in Photoshop, it's no longer a raw file. It's then a PSD file. And there it is, but it has that profile now embedded. Uh, another good question someone asks, is an outdoor profile different from one season to another, say summer to winter? I haven't seen that. Uh, it's possible depending on where you live, uh, but I have not seen a daylight profile to be any different in the summer because, again, remember, what a profile is correcting for is changes in the spectrum of the light, and the sun's spectrum isn't going to change in the middle of the day. Yes, during the evening and the morning, it gets more golden because the blues are being absorbed. However, you generally want to leave that alone. You want to keep that. <laughs> oh dear, I'm sorry for this little cough I've got. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you that is also affected here. And let me go back to this Snow Canyon shot. Of you. If you've ever been out in the desert southwest, one of the things that can really throw you off, and this will case take you hours of correcting, if you're in Monument Valley or a place like this, you've got this reddish-orange sandstone that is reflecting up over everything. Now, if you had a person in this scene that you were doing some environmental portrait, that's going to reflect onto their skin, and it is a bear to try to correct that. Having a custom profile for a scene like this completely eliminates that. Uh, Monument Valley is a bear of a place to shoot without a profile. And anywhere else where you have a huge predominance of a certain color, it can even happen out in a field or under some trees where you've got a lot of green grass and leaves, and green is reflecting everywhere. By creating a profile, it will back that off. Uh, so again, if you've got somebody that you're photographing in the shade, that green is reflecting onto the skin. Hold the target in front of them, take a shot of it, create a profile for that scene, and it will eliminate that green cast that is all over everybody. Okay, well, a couple more questions. Uh, Jim Metz asks, once the PSD file is opened in Photoshop, can a different profile be used? And the answer is no, not on that file. What you would have to do is go back into Adobe Camera Raw, get your raw file again, and apply a different profile. Once you open it up in Photoshop, then you're done. Uh, now, so another question, and let me make, make this clear. And Larry asks, if you work in Adobe Raw, uh, should you have a raw file to work on and a duplicate to keep in another folder? And the answer to that is no, there is no reason to do that. Why? Because a raw file actually cannot be edited. Every time you do something to a raw file, the thing is it's going to be converted to something else. A raw file is inviolate. So for example, this raw file, and you can see I've got copy one, copy three of this same scene that I've applied the profile to. If I export this file, even as a raw, it's, it's still not applying the profile into the raw. It just has a listing that says, well, when you display the raw, please use this profile, but you can always go back. You can always make changes. When you export a file or open it in Photoshop, it's making a copy. It's creating something else. You always have your raw file available to you, and there's nothing you can actually do to the file. And just a couple more questions, um, because we're just about out of time. Uh, Al asks, uh, if I work in ProPhoto RGB, when I print in sRGB, do I compensate for the loss of color and density? And the answer to that is yes, and stay tuned, because we're going to be doing a program on that, how to go through the soft proofing process uh, and printer profiling so that you can compensate for those kinds of changes. Uh, oh, and, and, and uh, Frank also asked another good question. Can you make a profile dedicated to a, not only a particular camera, but a different, say, uh, a different setting, a different shutter uh, ISO setting or something like that? And the answer is absolutely yes. First of all, Every profile is tied to the camera. So you can see here I've got all my, my Sony A7R profiles. However, if I go over to a shot that was done with a different camera, which I believe this one was. Let's see. Let me bring it up. Uh, actually, no. Let's see. I know i got one here somewhere that I shot with a different camera. And I think this might be it. Let's see. Nope. I know they're in here somewhere. 
uh, the, the profiles are specific to the camera. It actually reads the metadata inside the camera and will not allow you to, oh, here we go. So here's one that was, the, again, shot in the same location, but a different camera. So now you can see when I choose the profiles, only the profiles for that camera show up. So here we have, this is shot with the Sony a6000. So only profiles that are created with the camera can be applied to shots shot with that camera. So if I have a profile for the a6000, I can't apply it to shots taken with the a7 or any other camera. So it's got to be specific to the camera. So yes, you do need to have profiles for your cameras. All right, so let's summarize. White balance again and profiles work together to give you the best color per possible. A white balance sets the neutral. A profile gives the neutral directions on how to get to all the other colors. And that will eliminate any problems if you've got mixed lighting. Oh, by the way, if any of you are wedding photographers and you have multiple shooters, if you create a profile for the lighting conditions there, and if, say, you're shooting a Sony and someone else shooting a Canon and someone else is shooting a Nikon, if you create a profile for each of the cameras under those conditions, guess what? They'll all match. They will all have the same reference to work on, so they all go to the same red, green, and blue. Uh, it really is a beautiful thing. There's no worrying about that. Oh, somebody's camera's color was way off. By having this, that eliminates that problem. And also, as I mentioned, if you've got a situation with severe color reflections, like the desert southwest in the, in the sand, uh, or if, if you've got a lot of green reflecting up, it will collect, correct for that as well. So guys, thank you for all the great questions. Uh, I tried to get to as many as possible. If you want some more information and you want to keep track of uh, other new webinars that are coming up, uh, visit xrightphoto.com. There's all kinds of cool stuff there. You can also download the latest drivers. So if you have a passport or if you've got a, oh, a color monkey display or something like that, make sure you're using the latest driver for your operating system. If you want to keep track on what I'm up to, uh, visit my website, there it is, joebradyphotography.com, and you can see what I'm up to. So until next time, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for spending time with us. Uh, get out there, enjoy the beautiful weather, and keep shooting. Bye-bye.